Hey everybody, it's John Finn, and you know what we got? Two figures to unbox and review. Anyway, no, we've got everybody's favorite father-daughter combo here. We've got the one and only Duncan Man-at-Arms, uh, inspired by his his appearance in Master in Revelation, excuse me, but more of his kind of filmation looks. It doesn't quite look like this in most of the series, but you should go watch it. It's I love it. It's really good. And we've got over here Miss Tila, and this is her look after the first episode. Um, and like I said, you got to go watch it if you haven't watched it. I love it. it the first five episodes are like a build up, and then the, <laughs> or maybe it's four episodes, and then that last episode, man, whoo, they pull the rug out from underneath you fast. But then things, things get crazy. Things get kind of Dragon Ball after that, and I, I just oh, I loved it. Anyway, hopefully there'll be another season coming to that. But we're gonna get these two bad boys open. Or excuse me, bad boy and badass. And we're going to take a look at them, look at their articulation. Hopefully they're both going to be uh, more articulate and, and workable than Skella God was. But we'll see very shortly. Just hang tight. I'm going to get these guys out of the box. All right, here they are in their plastic cell shells, their little inner bubbles here. And we can see a couple things about them right off the bat. First of all, um, Tila over here comes with a ton of accessories. She's got the fully extended staff. She's got the completely collapsed staff. And she's got the staff as a sword. And this was kind of her, her toy throughout the entire series. It could be a sword. It could be a staff. It could be a freaking lightsaber handle. Um, and I think she has something on her back to carry it, maybe. But we'll see. And um, as you can see here, Mr. Man-at-Arms comes with a couple of different hand sculpts to go with him. As well as this ginormous mace that... Uh, looks really badass and like it hurt uh, but we're gonna get these guys right out of the plastic and let's start oh who do I want to start with let's start with Tila so I'm just gonna put man at arms over here to the side don't fall Duncan don't you do it don't do it okay um, yeah I'm gonna get everything out of the package and we'll take a closer look quick note she's tied in by four plastic ties two on the arms up here and then two on the feet down here and here she is outside of her inner bubble. Looks like she just it looks like she just got out of the inner bubble and she's starting that stretch, you know, when you get up oh, in the morning. Let's take a quick look at her articulation. You got the head's articulation. A little bit stiff at first, but it starts to move. Shoulders. Good. Excellent. They both go down and up all the way. No problems there. As you know, both of my Skella gods had major problems. Double joints at the elbows. Both work fine. Wrist, swivel, and rock back and forth. It's a little bit tight on this side, but she does come with an extra hand sculpt, so that could help. And her right hand, ooh, right hand's a fist, so she can knock people out. It rocks pretty well, swivels just fine, twists at the waist. Uh, she has ab crunch and back and forth. Knees are pretty fine. They go back pretty far. Double jointed, of course. Uh, there's thigh swivel, and there's a swivel at the boot cut as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get these feet. Okay, they go back and front, front to back and then side to side. I want to start the detail on these boots. That is one of the best leather textures I've ever seen on an action figure. That is just fantastic. I love that detail. It's just kind of just kind of blotted on there and maybe dry brushed a little bit of darkness on top of it. That's a fantastic looking piece right there. And you can see the wraps coming all the way down. They're just enough of a different color to kind of stand out to you. She's got the, the pads here. Um, let's see if we can get that straight. Her knees are a little bit tight. They kind of click into place. They, they feel like they, they're on a ratchet more than the other ones uh, do. And is that a pin? No, no, it's just a it's just a piece of sculpt. Okay, okay. So they are pinless knees. Uh, you don't you don't see those joints. Uh, but you can you can kind of hear that ratchet action inside there. That's pretty interesting. Uh, it's not bad. It's not good. It's it's neither. Um, I'm gonna change out this fist sculpt fist hand for this holding hand real quick. Um, and she does come with one extra pair of hands. She comes with a a right holding hand and then like an open left hand. Um, she doesn't come with another fist or anything like that, but it looks like this. Um, so that's cool. Let's look at her face. That is definitely Tila's face. Uh, she doesn't look a whole lot like her Filmation or 2000X version because this is after um, 
And if you haven't watched Revelation spoilers, I'll let you turn off your video. Okay, uh, this is after uh, He-Man and Prince Adam have died. And she has become jaded because she just found out that Adam was He-Man. And she found out Arrow had been lying to her for years. And she was completely gutted. And so she left the Royal Guard and became basically a mercenary for hire. Um, she's got some great detail in her costume here with the straps coming over both shoulders onto her chest piece. You can see the uh, belts, two belts going across here. And she does have that holder for the weapon right here that goes right in the back. In fact, we'll go ahead and put this back here just to see if it fits well. Yeah, goes in pretty easy and it, it feels like it's gonna stay there too. Like, it's not stuck there, it's, it's tight, but that's, that's pretty good, because that means it's not going to go anywhere. Now, her armor is attached kind of funny back here, and it makes it look like it, it can come off, but I'm pretty sure it can't, because there doesn't seem to be any separation. Now, the paint even kind of overlaps, so that's kind of weird, but uh, it is what it is. Is that? No, it's just dirt. I'm just gross. Um, and you can kind of see hints of her old costume in the tunic she has on underneath her armor. It kind of is similar to what she would have been wearing before um, if it weren't a friggin' bikini. Um, let's see how well she holds first the sword because I've always loved swords with my He-Man figures. Oof. It's tight. Like, I feel like maybe... She doesn't want to hold it, but she is. Uh, I had to kind of bend her her um, thumb around. It's a little bit of misapplied paint right there on the blade from that silver. Um, it's not a big deal, but it does stand out pretty starkly because the rest of that blade is very black. Um, on the back side, it's just a little bit of molding there. Um, it's not an actual paint detail. It's just a thing in the sculpt. Um, pretty good detail on the weapon overall. Um, how does she stand? Let's get her feet straight first. Uh, oh, she stands fine. She stands just fine. Here is the staff slash spear version of it. This kind of reminds me of the weapon that the aliens used in Stargate. I feel like it should shoot like some kind of a concussive laser or something like that. Let's see if we can get her posed with that. Whoa! Uh oh, it's it's the end. It's the end. Oh, the revelation has come. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we got it in that hand, and because of those double-jointed elbows and all this articulation, we should be able to get it in both of her hands at the same time for some cool posing action. Whew. Yeah, I always feel like I'm going to break her thumbs, man. Okay, all right, that's cool. I don't know if I, if I can pose her with it, but she does look poseable with it. <laughs> Here we go, here we go, there we go. This looks cool. Let's see. Yeah! Yeah! That is badass! Okay, I see you, Tila. I see you. I'm gonna put you right over here from that. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes to that one. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get Man at Arms slash Duncan out of his plastic, and we're gonna take a look at him. All right, here is Duncan out of the package. Now, uh, just a quick note, he did have uh, plastic ties around both arms and both legs. It's a total of four. Um, his accessories, he comes with extra fist sculpts for both hands and also an extra open hand for his right and an extra holding hand for his left because he already has the opposite attached to him in package. He also comes with this mace, which has a fair bit of weight to it. Like, that's not a hollow piece of plastic. That's a solid sculpt, so that's kind of cool. That makes it feel like it's real quality. Yeah, you could smash something with that. Now let's take a look at this guy's articulation. His head seems fine. Yeah, it goes back and forth, up and down. Side to side is a little bit limited, but that's to be expected with the, the weird shape of the helmet and the armor. Although it should go probably a little bit further than it does. That's okay. Um, shoulders. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, right shoulder's completely stuck. Left shoulder's completely fine. Look at it. And it comes all the way down. No problem. Right shoulder, garbage. <laughs> oh, great, now I can't even find it. There it is. So you can see it there. 
that's as far as it goes. It ain't going no further. Um, man, that's so frustrating. I can't put it to words. Um, because this is a beautiful figure. The colors are bright and vibrant. The details are unbelievable. you got the fur coming out of the sleeves, his little uh, wrist bracers, the belt with the different colors on it, the loincloth and its detail down to his boots with even more of that strappy detail that looked pretty cool on um, Tila, looks cool on him. He's got nice details in the shoulder and leg armor that really, really pop. Um, it's just got nice highlights and stuff and really sticks out a lot better than I would have expected it to for it being man-at-arms because usually it's a pretty monotone armor, but they really stepped up the detail on this. And look, you can see kind of a a small break there in the shoulder. And this guy's straight out of the package. This hasn't, this hasn't seen any wear, tear, play, or anything. This is a brand new product, and it's, it's already broken. Um, this is not cool. <laughs> I mean, in the highest, this is not cool. Um, man. I'll tell you what, if I get one more big body figure with these big shoulders that doesn't work, I might just call it quits on this line. Um, this is just, it's demoralizing as a toy collector uh, that doesn't keep things mopped to have the, the figures fail on such a fundamental level that oh oh we got it we got it down oh my gosh but that's still a huge huge problem that should not have been that tight um i could have very easily broken off his arm at this joint like i did with the skelegod um that's a huge issue this is the third figure now where i've had the shoulder get stuck to the point where i thought i was going to break it and one time i actually did break it and now it Stuck again. Yep. Stuck back up. Um, dang. Dang. So, I guess... I guess if I do it like this, it's a little bit easier because he gets that extra bicep to, to kind of push it. But it is so tight. Um, man. Alright, so I am disappointed. Uh, that's just kind of the, the haps, though. That's what happens when you collect toys. The quality assurance isn't always there. Um, and it seems like wherever they're having these manufactured or whatever process they're using to make sure that these things work as they're supposed to, that process isn't working right. And that's that's a big issue. And I really hope Mattel does something about it and speaks to it because um, this could be an amazing toy line. Like This could be the best He-Man toy line ever if they can get these quality control issues under under control. I mean, the details on the helmet are almost perfect. Um, the face looks fantastic, it, it, but these the articulation keeps failing. And that is just not excusable for a company that has made as many action figures as Mattel has, especially as many He-Man action figures as they have. This shouldn't be an issue. I shouldn't be struggling with shoulder articulation in these figures. Um, the superpowers line back in the 80s had better articulation than these things in terms of the reliability. And that's that's sad. That the you know little six point of articulation figures are better than these 30 plus articulation point figures because they just aren't making sure that the articulation is actually working in the figures. Um so what I can do is make sure he can stand here. Yeah, he stands fine. So in terms of detail, you can't beat this. This is a beautiful figure. Um, the Masterverse has really excelled at the details in terms of these characters and their armors and their weapons and all of their accessories. They've just done a really good job. But with the articulation, with the actual figure nature of the figures, um, they failed a couple times at least already. So I can't quite recommend Duncan. Um, he's cool, and you can get that shoulder to move, at least I could, um, if you're really careful. But it's so frustrating, so I don't know. I can't really give it my full endorsement, but if you're just going to get it out of the package or keep it mock or whatever, and you're not going to handle him much, go for him. But if you're going to be handling him or if it's for your kids, I don't know if I can. Tila, on the other hand, 
just fantastic. It's an almost perfect figure. Um, it doesn't have as many details as the Man at Arms, but between its working articulation, its posability, and just the general look and feel of the figure, I, I can absolutely recommend that one. But I'm kind of half hearted on um, old Duncan here. So uh, take that as you will. I don't know. Um, hopefully these things will be worked out in the line as things go forward. And if they're not, then, you know, the line will be judged based on these things eventually. And um, collectors will, will get either upset or they'll just keep all of their figures mock. And then that'll be, um, that'll be bad for the, the line in general because less people will be buying them then. Because uh, as we've learned from the Toy Guru, toys are made for kids ultimately. And if kids are getting these and they're breaking right out of the package, that's a huge problem. Um, if they can't use the toys the way they're designed to, that's a huge problem. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you keep collecting the way you like to collect, whether that's keeping your figures mock or opening them for display or for play. However you like to do it's the right way to do it. And if anybody else tells you otherwise, tell them that you're going to shove man-at-arms mace somewhere. It's not very comfortable. Until next time. Oh, wait. If you enjoyed this, like it, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 250 uh, subscribers by the end of 2022. And if you can help me get there, I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm John Finn, and I'm out.